Welcome to a new vlog, the series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. We're going to start with this battery charger from Litokala. Model number is uh, Engineer Li 500. It works with an external uh, 12 volts uh, power supply, which I opted not to get from the supplier because uh, we all have a bunch of uh, 12 volts uh, adapters from old equipment. So I have one right here, let's plug it in. Now this uh, charger supports uh, lithium ion cells and nickel metal hydride cells. It does not support lithium ion phosphate batteries, but it has four independent charging ports, each with its own um, uh, spring loaded socket. So that means you can charge different types of batteries at the same time because each bank will handle its own battery accordingly. So like I uh, mentioned they have these uh, spring loaded sockets which allow you to connect uh, different uh, sized batteries up to 26650 they say. Uh, it has a uh, backlit LCD that shows information about the uh, battery voltage. Uh, in fact let me plug in a battery to uh, better show you this. Let's get the uh, protection film from this LCD. So this is the information you get on uh, screen. Uh, when a battery is inserted you get the uh, uh, battery voltage, the charging capacity, uh, the time, the uh, internal resistance of the battery, the charging current. So quite a lot of info on this uh, LCD. And it, uh, the charger itself has three operating modes. The first mode is charge and uh, it should be obvious what this mode does. Then there is fast test. I think uh, what the, that mode does is to discharge the battery then charge it to full to determine the capacity of the battery. And then there is the uh, third mode which is normal test uh, which first charges the battery then discharges the battery, then charges it again, uh, thus providing greater accuracy for determining the uh, true battery capacity. This video is sponsored by JLCPCB.com who in the past months upgraded their manufacturing line so they are now offering 24 hours turnaround time for prototype PCBs for the same price of just $2. Prototyping is now faster and cheaper than any other place, so it's definitely worth checking them out. In the user manual there is this um, very interesting mention, like there is a little fever when the charger is charging and discharging, but it is a normal phenomenon. Yep, really cool Chinglish in this uh, user manual, um, but is uh, not as bad, you can still figure it out uh, how to operate the charger. Now I don't want to turn this uh, into a review but if you'd like to see more about this uh, charger maybe a teardown let me know in the comments below and uh, if uh, people request it I will do a separate video on this charger. My next item is a uh, simple copper rod which I got from AliExpress. Uh, I ordered this a few weeks ago when um, I was uh, doing the first test with the uh, DIY spot welder. If you haven't seen that video I will link it on screen right now. But I was thinking that maybe I could make some thicker electrodes to prevent them from uh, sticking to the uh, weld point. So I was hoping this uh, might be a better type of copper, maybe with different properties and the fact that it's thicker might help also. But now I realize this brings a new problem into my life because if the electrodes are this thick and I have to have two of them, this bar is 6 mm in diameter so I cannot get the tips to be very close together. There's going to be a, um, a wide spread at the tip of the electrodes. Um, like 5 or 6 millimeter which would be a problem especially on the positive end of uh, 18650 batteries uh, which is a, usually a smaller tab. Now one solution would be to to grind these um, with the tips pointing inwards but still I'm not sure how close I could get them to be. Ideally I want uh, 3 or 4 millimeters between the points uh, and you can't really make these very sharp either. 
So I'm still considering a uh, better option the ready-made welding pens that you find on AliExpress because those have the very thin uh, electrodes that can go really close together. So maybe I'll use this uh, copper bar for another project. My next item is a uh, set of uh, wooden sticks. I believe these are intended to be used for waxing and uh, stuff like that. So let me explain what I need them for. Now, whenever I assemble SMD boards, I use solder paste, which comes in, uh, uh, let me show you these types of uh, small cans. And um, you need some kind of stick to get the paste from the can on the stencil and then back in the can. So uh, I, used, uh, I used to use sticks from ice cream. I uh, asked all my family members to save them after consuming ice cream. So those are great because uh, they have a really uh, clean finish, no rough edges, no parts that could come loose, obviously because they're, uh, they come with a, a product that you're supposed to eat. But I'm out of them, uh, it's winter here, so people don't eat that much uh, ice cream during winter time. Um, so at least not those that come on a stick. So these ones uh, I ordered from AliExpress are really cheap, but I don't know how well they're going to work uh, because uh, let me get a close up of this. Uh, they're a bit rough finished. It looks like uh, they have small chips and bits of wood that um, could come off. Like for example, you already see them here on my fingers and this stuff will get into the solar paste which would be bad for the boards I assembled. So I'm not really sure I should use these. Now I'm open to suggestions. What do you guys use for uh, working with the uh, solder paste? Next up, a small and uh, interesting at the same time module. This is called ESP32CAM and as the name implies, it uh, contains a uh, small um, ESP32 module connected with a camera module based on the OV2640 CMOS sensor. Now, the module offers a uh, USB Type-C connector. Um, it has onboard USB to serial conversion and also features a uh, LiPo battery charger as well as uh, footprints for the um, MPU 6050, which is an accelerometer slash gyroscope, as well as the uh, BME uh, 280 barometer. So it's pretty densely packed. Even if you don't want to use the camera option, it still feels like a nice ESP32 board um, if you want USB Type-C or the option of uh, soldering uh, these uh, sensors for yourself. Now this camera module is pretty unimpressive in uh, terms of specs, but it might be just what you need to enable, to enable some um, low power image processing algorithms for something like face detection or object detection. And I guess that's the whole purpose of this development board, to give the opportunity to combine the uh, ESP32 chipset with an inexpensive uh, camera and play with some image processing software. I might give this one a try in a Sunday when I feel like uh, relaxing by playing with the new circuit. As always, you will find links for these items in the description below the video. Next, I got myself yet another Build Touch clone sensor from AliExpress. Now, this one seems to come with a couple of uh, spring accessories for mounting, which weren't included with the previous one I had. So, I got a new one to see if the vibration I was having would go away. Something new is that they now include uh, these springs in the package. I suppose they go on the mounting screws, but wouldn't that be problematic for the sensor itself because uh, the mounting would not be solid anymore? Could that cause errors while probing the bed? I'm not sure, but it would depend on how stiff these uh, springs are. And actually the sensor pin doesn't push against the bed so hard so I guess if the springs are just a little bit stiff it shouldn't be an issue. Now I can see some advantages to having these springs. First it could protect the sensor if you have the wrong configuration and the sensor smashes in the print bed it could give like one or two millimeters um, of movement 
Ne next, it, it could also offer a few millimeters of adjustment for the, for the sensor. Like if you tighten the screws, decrease the length of the springs, you adjust the height of the sensor. Uh, but I'm, I really don't think I will use them. I have a, a good mount on my printer. I don't think I need these uh, springs, but it's nice of them to uh, include them in the kit. Next item is a replacement for a Hako T12 soldering tip. This one is from a, a company called uh, Case Gur. Not sure how to pronounce this, but um, yeah, you get the point. Uh, I'm sure they just rebrand these uh, tips they get from a factory in China, the same factory that supplies all sellers which offer a replacement or genuine in code marks T12 tips. So this looks very similar to the uh, genuine Hako tips, but I wanted to do a comparison to see if the performance is also similar. So I got this uh, T12 JO2 replacement tip. And I also got a genuine T15 JO2 tip from a local Hacko distributor. So now the T12 versus T15 naming difference is because of the different region in the EU and US, I believe also, they sell the T15 while in Asia they sell as a T12. But it should be the same uh, product. So I will be comparing those uh, two tips in a future video to see if there is any performance difference between one of these clones and the original hacker tip. One day when uh, I was browsing AliExpress, I stumbled upon these uh, lightning to three and a half millimeter audio adapters for the iPhone. Now I was aware that the genuine versions that you get from Apple contain some electronics, particularly a uh, digital to analog converter, because uh, this adapter gets digital data through the lightning port and then does the conversion to analog on this small adapter. So I got one of these fake adapters out of curiosity because I was wondering how did our Chinese friends manage to copy these? What did they put inside? Now on a quick check, the fake version has this awful hiss uh, background noise. So there is certainly a poor quality design or chip in here um, and probably construction in general, although it looks identical to the original one. Now, when you simply connect it, everything is silent because I'm guessing the uh, output of the DAC is turned off. But when you start playing something, if you lower the volume, the hiss is definitely constant and it's there and is disturbing. So I think I'll do a separate video with a test of this versus the original and then maybe a teardown of the fake one to check what it has inside. My next item is a tool used for wire wrapping. And the story is uh, quite funny because more than a year ago, I ordered uh, this model from eBay. Now that package somehow got lost. It never arrived. I don't remember if I ever got a refund or if I forgot about the order. But maybe a year later, I saw a video from Andreas Pies. He got the same tool in a mailbag. So that made me uh, uh, order it again. And the second time arrived just fine. Now these uh, tools are not exactly cheap, um, they're like $12, so um, compared with other tools we get from China, I wouldn't call this one cheap. This particular model is for AWG30 uh, wrapping wire, and uh, let me demonstrate how you can use it. You have a tool right here at the middle of the handle, which I believe you can use for stripping wire. I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure if you're supposed to go in from, from this side or from this side. I guess ultimately it doesn't matter. So I think you can use this part of the tool to strip the wire. And yep, yeah, it, uh, it works really good. And then what you have to do is uh, insert the wire at this end and have it uh, come out of through that small slot. Something like this and you probably get better at doing this um, after you've gained some uh, experience. Now let's say you would, you would want to wrap this uh, wire around a uh, pin header or some connection point. You just place the tool over that uh, point and you start spinning. And this will wrap the, the wire tightly on that pin header resulting in a very reliable connection. And it looks something like this when it's finished. As you can see, a pretty uh, good connection. 
So if you do prototyping work, you could use this uh, tool to wrap wires nicely around IC legs or pin headers. Now I could also see myself using this for the rare and odd jobs, maybe a repair where you need to run a, a thin wire. Uh, it's just a new way of uh, wrapping wire and a nice compact tool that uh, I liked and uh, I like the idea of having this in my toolbox. Next up I got some of these uh, LED lamp holders. I have two different sizes here. These are uh, the smaller ones are 3 mm, the bigger ones are 5 mm and you could use these on a front panel to have a nice holder for a through hole LED. Now older equipment used to have these on front panels. These days it's all gone. It's replaced with soft membrane front panels with SMD LEDs behind that or light pipes that direct the light coming from an SMD LED from a PCB to the front panel. So these are a bit of uh, old school, uh, but it's nice to play with them if you're building your own enclosures and projects. So let me show you how you would uh, connect something like this. Let's take the five millimeter one example. The hole is, uh, this hole is probably like seven or eight millimeters, I haven't checked, but you would drill this hole on your front panel. You would install this using the um, locking nut. The LED goes in through the back and then you have one of these um, plastic uh, mounting pieces like the, uh, the LED needs to go through this. And this is what locks the LED in place on the front panel. So it, it goes something like this. And also the same for the uh, 3mm one. And the last item in today's video is this uh, fiber optic cable. This is side glow fiber. And if you remember some time ago I had this in a mailbag video in a thicker size. Now I wanted something thin, so this is just uh, 1.5 millimeter in diameter, but I am just as disappointed as I was with my previous purchase. Let me show you what I mean after I connect an LED to light this up. So I've turned off the lights in here. This is a small 3 millimeter LED powered up from my bench power supply and it's just wrapped in some heat shrink to uh, contain the light. I've also done the same on the fiber. I've added some, a piece of uh, heat shrink. And now if we connect these two, now this is pretty much the uh, brightness that uh, you're getting. And actually the, the camera shows this brighter than I see it uh, in real life. So we get a gradient, like from the start here is very bright and like uh, 30 centimeters, 40 centimeters away, it, it dims considerably. So this is usable like maybe on a 30 or 40 centimeter strip but maybe if you add two LEDs to light it up from both sides and it would still be like dimmer in the middle. An EL wire for example if we compare to an EL wire uh, the uh, usual neon wire that runs at uh, above 100 volts uh, that is uh, brighter than what this stuff is and it also provides an even illumination across the entire length which is not the case here with this fiber. Now of course with an EL wire you have the disadvantage of the limited lifespan because it ages and the uh, brightness will decrease as uh, you increase the usage hours and you also are limited to just a single car uh, as opposed to this fiber where you could connect a, an RGB LED and have a bunch of uh, different colors. Now I suppose I'm getting the bad stuff because I'm getting it for cheap from AliExpress. So there should be side glow fiber with much better properties, but I just don't know where to find it. That's why I uh, thought I'd try this glow fiber again, but it's the same shit, not very effective and uh, I don't think I can use this. That was all for today. I hope you enjoyed uh, seeing these items and I would really appreciate if you would support the channel by hitting the like button. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week.